Hello and welcome to the Burlington Mayor's Live at 525 show. This is the first time we have done one of these shows in more than a year and a half. It is great to be back in the Channel 17 uh, 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 studios. I'm not using the right label now. What would, <laughs> it's uh, t t town hall television, right? Town meeting television. Town meeting, back in the town meeting television offices, thank you for tuning in. This is a live show right now on Wednesday afternoon, and those of you out there, if you want to call in, we will be, we will be uh, taking calls, and I think you should be able to see the number um, up on the screen. And what we are going to be talking about, we'll, we'll take calls on anything that you're interested in talking about, any, anything Burlington. Um, but what uh, we're going to focus the show on, and what I, uh, who I, I'm joined by Chapin Spencer, our director of public works, and Martha Keenan, who works basically, has been in a variety of roles with the city and working on special projects. And the two of them, for years now, have been the head of the team that has been refreshing much of Burlington's public infrastructure. And we have a big decision before us of a community to take another step towards that um, coming up in a special election, we hope, uh, in, in early December. And we can talk about it. It's an unusual time for election. We can talk about that in a moment. Um, we're broadcasting this um, show um, uh, a week before we are hoping the city council is going to give approval to this package to put it on a ballot for a special election, a $40 million infrastructure plan, which uh, is um, a, a basically uh, people who will remember, we, we did this four years ago or five years ago. Six years ago now? 2016. 2016. <laughs> Uh, there was a vote on in the in the fall of 2016 to support what we call the Sustainable Infrastructure Plan. And I guess why don't we try to get in? We'll we'll go over the history with the slide deck, and I'll give a bit of the history, then I'll turn it over to you, Chapin, to kind of walk people through the the current plan. So, this in some ways this work goes all the way back to 2014 when um, uh, I put in. Um, kind of announced a major goal in the state of the city back in 2014, first, first term as mayor, feels like a long time ago now, um, uh, that, we would, that we wanted to make a real push on, uh, on infrastructure. And we wrote what we believe to have been the kind of first modern infrastructure plan for the city. A first draft of that was approved in 2015. In 2016, the council acted, and then we went to the voters uh, for a, a piece of the plan, and the overall plan was about $50 million and involved a number of different sources, including philanthropy and money from the, the big uh, institutions, UVM, Champlain College, some from the hospital even. Um, and we also had some water bonding money there. But the biggest single piece of the plan was a $27.5 million general obligation bond. Voters overwhelmingly supported that. 78% of voters voted yes on that in November of 16. And for the last five years, we've been putting that money in, in the ground and have really made, uh, changed the trajectory of a lot of Burlington's um, uh, public assets. So, uh, you know, big picture, we rebuilt the entire eight mile um, bike path, the, the greenway. Um, that is the, the final pieces, just about the final piece of it is taking place right now in Oak Ledge Park. If you've been down there the last few weeks, you notice that it's much of it's closed because that work's going on right now. Um, we have tripled the amount of sidewalk investment that we had been making for many years leading up to 2016. We doubled the amount of money that we're putting into our roadways. And we have, after too many years of deferred maintenance with our buildings, been making significant investments uh, in everything from the library to fire stations to city hall um, uh, to the, the, the hockey rink. But we're not done, and we knew we wouldn't be done. The plan was for five years of infusion of efforts, and and um, you know, here's some additional uh, bullet points on what we just went through. I think we kind of covered covered all that. I think we can keep moving. What what? Um, video security system, asset management system. We we. Um, but we aren't done, and we, we, we knew that we were funding with that first bond just the first five years of this effort. 
Um, we had planned to come back in 2020 with a, another vote. The pandemic got in the way of that. It was really impossible to focus on anything else from March of 2020 on. And I think it would have been a very challenging time to go to voters um, with the financial uncertainty of a year ago. And, you know, we have to acknowledge this is still uh, a somewhat um, challenging time, uh, an, an uncertain time. But things are, on the other hand, there's a lot of signs that the economy is strengthening again. And uh, we want to get go to, to voters who have continued to say this is a is a priority as recently as the budget survey that we did uh, while making this year's budget. Infrastructure is very much on people's minds and we're gonna go back out to voters and, and uh, ask for support for another bond. Um, if we don't do it, we will lose another year of uh, enhanced construction, far, fall farther behind in certain areas. Um, and there's another advantage as pointed out on here on the slide is that by bonding now, we are still in a historically low interest rate environment. Hopefully that continues for a while, but there's really no guarantee of it. Um, final point is we do expect that um, uh, 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 well, I think that's that's a good, good start for now. The, we also we another advantage of the bonds is that there will be uh, by putting in some local dollars, we um, are expecting to be able to leverage tens of millions of federal dollars for a variety of both established projects and then um, potentially even additional new projects that might be possible to get funded in this federal infrastructure bill that's being talked about right now. I've been talking for a while. Let me turn it over to, to Chapin um, next to maybe hit the, the big picture, Chapin, with what, what, what are people going to benefit from with this uh, next um, round of bonding if it is approved? Great. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, as you had noted, that we're proposing to use some of these bond funds to really leverage a significant amount of state and federal dollars. And kudos to the team in the city and my department and others who have really chased uh, these funds. And we have secured funds for Champlain Parkway, for Rail Yard Enterprise Project, for bike pedestrian projects such as the Intervale Shared Use Path, uh, Waterfront Shared Use Path improvements on Penny Lane. We're bullish to uh, find other sources of revenue to really reduce the impact on, uh, on property taxpayers in Burlington. We hope to really continue the success of the last five years and, uh, as the mayor indicated, doubling paving, tripling sidewalk work. Uh, and there is a kind of, there were a couple areas in the first five year plan that we realized that we didn't focus enough on. And one area was police and fire communications, so that is being addressed this round. Bridges were another area that we did not fully address last time around. And I think uh, near and dear to Martha's uh, interest is also uh, our facilities. In, in many facilities, we have been uh, keeping them going with Band-Aids, and we need a more structural, fundamental approach to weatherizing our buildings to really move us towards that net zero goal. So I'm really excited by the mix here of multiple departments, multiple different types of assets that really will improve the sustainability and resiliency of our city. Uh, that said, we know it is a large ask in an uncertain time, which is why we're here engaging the public in this conversation. Want to hear your questions or concerns so that hopefully uh, we can earn your trust uh, as we come forward with this uh, special election. So, uh, um, Chapin hit on many of the bullet points up on, on the screen here um, already. Uh, this section here at the bottom about advancing net zero goals, there's really two elements of, of this that, um, with, that would be funded by the bonding package. One is transportation improvements. And I, I think can we, uh, there we go. Um, the, um, one of the ways we're going to get to net zero to be essentially an emissions-free community by 2030, which is our official goal and backed by this roadmap that was passed a couple of years ago by the council and that we've been making progress on, um, about 5% uh, of the plan, that plan involves a reduction of vehicle miles traveled. Uh, and really the way you get there is by making it easier to walk and bike and um, uh, get around the, the city through through active transportation and, and uh, that th there's substantial dollars in this 
uh, in this bond that would allow us to um, do everything from continue to upgrade intersections. Um, people could think back to the intersection in the south end where Howard and um, St. Paul slash Shelburne Road converge, a five, very convoluted five-way intersection that right. we've recently completely changed the curb lines and made a much better, safer, easier to navigate intersection. Everything from that kind of work to um, uh, to continuing this effort to build a, a, a network of dedicated bike paths that um, we are we've come so far to towards over the last five years. That's right, and we're uh, really excited to continue that work. Uh, we started on the Winooski corridor implementation last year uh, that the council approved uh, with uh, a lane reconfiguration in the downtown. And now we're working uh, with the new, uh, Old North End community on extending uh, the bike lanes from downtown uh, into and through the Old North End, which will connect to the shared use path uh, on Riverside. So we will uh, soon have a city of Winooski to downtown Burlington connection uh, on, on bike lanes and shared use paths. That kind of connectivity is really important to giving people a safe and convenient route around our community. And as you noted, Mayor, there are additional investments that we're proposing as part of this bond. Uh, three fire engines are at their end of life. Uh, my Department of Public Works maintains our vehicles. And once a vehicle is at its end of life, it costs more money to keep it on the road than it would for us to be paying a lease payment on a new vehicle. It's fiscally irresponsible for us to try to maintain these large and complex fire apparatus uh, when they're past end of life. So we're really pleased to be tackling that. And I think, Mayor, a uh, last key item here really is Memorial Auditorium. I don't know if you want to touch on uh, that approach. <clears throat> yeah, great. So. Memorial Auditorium, uh, one clear theme of this round of bonding is this would allow us to take better care of the 25 major buildings that the city is responsible for, as well as a, you know, dozens of smaller structures. We have, um, of all the city assets that the that local government's responsible for, um, we're probably farther behind in terms of maintaining and investing in uh, our buildings um, that we are, you know, we have we have a lot of work to do there in general. And Moore Auditorium is a great example of that. Um, we, uh, for decades, um, declined to make significant investments in that building. There are a number of patches that were done over time, but it has been engineer after engineering studies going back at least uh, to the 80s, uh, I believe, has indicated that um, very significant investments needed to be made, and there's never the, the city's come close a couple times, but never been able to put together the uh, kind of political will and vision to really have a, a compelling plan for investment. There was a, at one point, I believe, a bond vote that failed. Um, we're now at the point where uh, the building's been closed for a couple of years because it isn't safe to continue to inhabit it. Um, we were working towards a redevelopment plan that we were going to take to the voters um, uh, back in the beginning of 2020. That, too, was interrupted by the pandemic. The situation we're in now is it's clear over the next couple of years we need to do, we need to go in one of basically three directions with the building. One, um, we could just basically stabilize the building and reopen it in its more or less its historic form, modernized with sprinklers and fire, uh, you know, kind of minor, modern fire alarms and whatnot, but without a kind of major redevelopment, just sort of restoring its historic use. Another possibility would be if the, if, um, to, to transition the site to some kind of other use. And then the third possibility is one that's starting to get attention is we could, we I, I proposed to the school district that we look together at a dual use facility that would serve as both a gymnasium and auditorium for a new high school on that block, as well as a uh, public assembly space when it's not being used by the school district, which is a vision that you know is, excites me and is there's lots of precedence for that in modern high schools around the country serving both high schools and um, the community. So 
we in this package is ten million dollars that would allow us to to move quickly on one of those three directions. It would take further action by the city council for us to commit to one of those directions. Voters can make it clear by supporting this bond, though, that um, uh, in investing in Memorial Auditorium is a, is a priority, and that, um, that people recognize that we can't continue to uh, defer action. Why don't we go on to the next slide? Um, Martha, why don't we let you jump in here? Let me let me introduce Martha as uh, we um, move to this next slide. Martha has been a huge part of the City of Burlington team for six, seven years now. Martha, how long has it been? Eight. Eight, eight, eight years. years. January. All right. Wow. So. You know, Martha enjoyed in the, the first the first term that I was mayor, we created a position to work on on basically capital projects, recognizing that we were under investing in our projects, that we often had projects that were sort of on the books and then never went anywhere. Martha has changed all that. She's been responsible for dozens and dozens of projects in just about every corner of the city um, over the last eight years. So thankful for her service to the city. And one of the reasons I'm really excited about this bond is to, to make sure we can keep Martha busy and uh, keep, uh, keep the momentum that she has really, um, in a lot of ways, single-handedly created. Uh, and why don't you talk, you know, we've hit on some of these, Martha, but anything else on this sort of list that makes up the 40 million that you want to add some points on? So I think, thank you, Mayor, I think you made some really good points, as did Chapin. Um, we talked sort of about continuing that enhanced funding for both the streets and sidewalks. Um, one area is, is our IT area, is that now with the pandemic, we learned how important IT and security is. So we need to continue improving that um, system throughout, so we have money for that in this. Um, we also, um, with all of these grants and the possibilities of the infrastructure bill, we need to have money there for those matches. We could get as much as 30, 40, 50 million dollars in grants, and we need to have money there to have our portion of that match. It's a great way to leverage our dollars to get other dollars out there. Um, in our previous plan, we did not talk about bridges, and the city has quite a few bridges, and um, they need work, and so we do have money in this. Um, the let's, let's let's dig in on that just because I think when you say the so yeah, I think that might be surprising people. What, I mean, some of these bridges have been a surprise to me. Like for example, <laughs> uh, when we took control of the bike path um, back in the 80s. Um, I think a kind of hidden liability of that is uh, by taking over responsibility for the rail property, there was a, there is a bridge over the uh, rail lines there that connects Rock Point um, to the mainland, essentially. And that is a, the, the, the city's responsibility to replace. It is an old bridge and um, it's becoming a, a safety hazard. So that's one bridge. There's uh, another bridge to the, the bike path. Um, th this will be really the last element of the bike path in the full re renovation is the North Beach Bridge. People can envision when they drive to the parking area in North Beach to go, you know, to go swimming, you go through this sort of tunnel. That is quite an aged facility and is in need of replacement. And just on that one bridge is that they're actually going to make it wider so that fire trucks can fit through it and two-way traffic can go through it. So it makes it more accessible for those people camping there to get to and from the beach. So it's a, a great improvement that will be done. Ambulances too, right? Like ambulances, yeah. Right. So hopefully we won't have too many fires down there, but certainly no, there's some reasons why the ambulances need to get through there to the... Absolutely. Um, so there is, um, for all of these projects, there's project management. You can't get it done if you don't have the resources and the consultants on hand to make it work. Uh, the mayor touched on the civics buildings. We still continue to have deferred maintenance on them. We have a number of historic buildings, and they're more expensive to take care of than your more modern buildings, so we need to at attend to those. Um, the parks uh, you have penny for parks and impact fees. However, they have some areas that are larger projects or are not necessarily in a park. There is a boathouse that is actually on water, and so it's not considered a park, but it is a part of the park system, and it needs work. And so there is money in here to attend to those different areas. 
I believe Chapin spoke to the various fleet items. And the public safety infrastructure is that the city has its own public safety infrastructure that covers only the city for their cell towers, their repeaters, their um, radios, and that system is at end of life and needs to be replaced. I think that's kind of an interesting topic that probably, I, I certainly wasn't totally clear on how this worked, that the reason, you know, I think one thing that Burlingtonians are appreciative of and proud of is that fire, when, when, when there's a call for medical services, when there's a call for some kind of security issue, um, we are able to respond uh, very quickly, um, historically. I mean, we, we have this issue going on with policing right now, of course, but let's not go there. But the, 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 um, the re fast response times has historically been something voters have been uh, very uh, uh, aware of and, and committed to. That's why we added a third ambulance um, just earlier this year. The way that we, you know, a key element of actually being able to serve every corner of the city and do it quickly and skillfully and in a coordinated way is to maintain good communications linkages from dispatch, um, you know, from the from the sort of central operations out to all these folks in the field, and it literally takes our own set of cell towers and repeaters and, and to, to ensure that there is, uh, um, that, that there's good communications and, and media communications throughout. So that's what this investment, you know, substantial investment in is, is keeping that level of service possible. Um, here's the broader $150 million plan that Chapin referenced. Uh, I think this is important to see that, you know, we are working very hard to, secure other sources of money other than, you know, we, we essentially go to property taxpayers as a last resort. I know people doesn't always feel that way, but we, it is, uh, it is the, um, it is the most stable source of city funding, but it is, it is also one that we have worked very hard to, um, stay within our means and stay, uh, within good, responsible, borrowing standards, and we have a graph on that in a moment, as well as uh, ensure, you know, to, we're very sensitive to affordability every time we make a, a decision that impacts property taxes. So on this graph, you know, we won't go through every cell of this, but you can see how there are many different sources that are being drawn upon to try to fill this ambitious $150 million vision of infrastructure investment in the city over the next three years, and uh, the bonding piece of it only makes up uh, this bond makes up $40 million of that, so less than a third of the overall um, goals. This is a kind of wonky graph, which I'm probably, uh, I'll, I'll take this one. I love, uh, this page I find very reassuring, and I think it's an important page, but what, it, I, I, we won't go through every cell on this either, but what this, sh I hope, well, here's what people should understand about this, is that we are in a period in which both the school district and the city need to make major capital investment. We had a major discussion, policy discussion in 2018 about what, how much is too much borrowing? What are the limits of what we should borrow responsibly? Um, and we came up with this policy uh, uh, that is reflected on this screen, which is we will not borrow more than, um, uh, 1.75 to 2 percent of the grand list for city uh, municipal needs and that the overlapping debt, um, the combined debt between the school district and the city should not exceed 4 percent. And what this graph shows is that with this $40 million bond, we will uh, stay underneath that 2 percent cap. Um, there is what's the highlighted cells there show that we are exceeding our target for um, a brief period, for three years here, and then we, because of debt retirement and um, growth of the grand list, uh, we will then be back within a target at the end of three years. And what the bottom half of the graph shows is that um, there is substantial additional capacity left for the school district uh, to uh, pursue the new high school. And that, of course, is, I know, on many people's minds an important part of this conversation. So what does this all cost? Chapin, do you want to, or Martha, do you want to, to take a shot at this? I've been talking for a while. 
Sure. So our um, taxpayer, the median home, is around $379,000. And what this uh, shows is that there would be modest increases with this bond. Um, somewhere in the area of $7 a month to $13 a month maximum in 2025. And you actually see, as, as the mayor mentioned in the previous slide, it starts to go down after that because we are retiring debt. So it does go up for a few years and then your actual um, tax increase would be reduced over the final years. Yeah, it's really it's two significant factors that really kind of compound and accrue over time. It's that that um, retirement of other debt, as well as there is pretty consistent um, growth of the grand list through new investment. Um, so you, you start, you, you know, it only is about uh, one percent a year, but that does uh, add and compound and does start to you know share the number of uh, the, the the tax base that these costs are spread out over. So that's why it peaks out at. 13, you know, just about thirteen dollars a month in 2025, and then and then goes down from there. And and you know, I think it's a fair question that people ask. Like, like, is it? What are you? What are you getting for the thirteen dollars a month? And again, the what I think people should have on their minds, you know, if they if and when they go and get a chance to vote on this, is for thirteen dollars a month, you are getting um, continued major historically high levels of investments in our streets and sidewalks. You are getting three new fire engines combined with the two that we just bought means that we will in this period have refreshed this six truck fleet, all of which were nearly at the end of the life five years ago. We will have almost all of them would, will be essentially new or near new. Um, we will have resources to finally uh, resolve um, the situation with Moral, Memorial Auditorium and bring or vibrancy and life back to that that part of the city. Um, we will be making progress towards our, our, our net zero goals. We will significantly improve active trans the active transportation system, um, and um, you know, and, and, the, and so much with facilities yeah. and parks all across the city. Yeah, so is that you know to me when I think of the other things I spend thirteen dollars a month on, I, I don't feel like I get anywhere near that kind of value but it is you know it is it is a it is a real cost that people are being asked to take on here and uh, our goal is to make sure people understand as well as possible what what that value is over the next couple months leading up to December 7th we're almost out of time I think we're almost through the spreadsheet as well here are the next steps Martha you want to finish this off sure um, since July we've been talking to all the different commissions and committees we're going to keep doing that we have received letters of support from most of those uh, commissions and committees that we have met with, either through a motion or a letter, um, we are seeking approval from both Board of Finance and City Council on September 27th. Uh, we'll continue meeting with everyone and getting the word out there, helping educate everybody understand why we need to keep our city vibrant. And on December 7th, there will be a special election, we hope. Awesome. Great doing this with both of you guys. Thank you for all your hard work to get this ready for the voters to weigh in. Thank you to Town Meeting Television for giving us, uh, making this venue possible and for being back covering city council meetings and, and helping us bounce back from this pandemic period. Plan is to be back uh, next month with another mayor's show. Thanks for tuning in.